Hey guys, CBFC here and welcome back to another video on my channel. If you guys weren't aware, on Saturday it was quite a big day for me in terms of my FIFA 21 season. So I had the chance to try and break into that top 8 to try and get myself a spot for the playoffs which is in May, June. Uh, this year by entering into the regional Oceania qualifiers the third and final Qualifier of the FIFA 21 season So I mean I was left with the task where I pretty much had to make the broadcast To try and get myself into that top eight uh, Even if I secured some kind of points it probably wasn't going to be enough So you know obviously I had to try and give it my best go on Saturday to try and do that And even if we didn't get there in the end uh, I still believe that a 10th spot finish or even somewhere around the top 12 would have been really, really good for me in my first competitive season. I never ever would have expected to make a broadcast event, which I did in the first regional qualifiers in this FIFA 21 season. Um, however, let's get into the highlights and see how I went. And in the first game of the day, we were up against Vince. So I have versed Vince quite a number of times in weekend league and... Uh, especially in FIFA 20, but I haven't really versed him at the competitive level before. I believe he's played in the E-League as well, so he looks Vince is a, a very good player. And, um, you know, I have, have versed him a couple of times, as, as I said. So as we can see here, he's got, he's got I think that's mid Cruyff, and he's got Garincha as well. So quite a good team. So we'll see how this one pans out. Uh, I believe I kind of had um, an early chance here. I can't remember who it was, but... Somebody went down here early on and um, got a bit of got a bit of luck, I think, with the penalty here. I, I don't think I fully deserve that penalty, um, you know. So I don't really know how I was brought down. It was just a bit of bit of luck on my end, and I think a bit of justice, to be honest, with me missing that penalty. I don't really think I deserve that that goal to start off the game. So um, yeah, look, I gave the ball away, uh, you know, quite stupidly there and. Managed to get it back and um, kind of just sort of attacked quite quickly here. Tried to get my winger. Well, it might be my striker, actually. No, that is my winger. That's Mbappe down on the wing with the, the ball roll scoop. I've been loving that skill move um, lately. One of my favorite skill moves. Been spamming it a little bit, I might actually add as well. So, um, yeah, especially on the wing uh, over there to try and get back inside. So, was able to get myself another chance sort of um, just over the half hour mark of the game and Pele was able to slam that one home to give me a 1-0 lead. And then going into the halftime interval of the first leg of the regional Oceania qualifier number three for the first game, I was um, up 1-0. Uh, you know, it was pretty pretty much an even game, really just one chance separating us. I had the extra shot, and that was pretty much the difference in the end for that first half. And then as we can see here, around the 57th minute, managed to get down that wing again. Uh, that time it was, I think it was Saint, so it might have been on the other side, the other wing, the right-hand side, and was able to, to find Pele back inside again to double the advantage and take a 2-0 lead there. And towards the end of the game, I kind of just thought, well, you know, it's 2-0. I've got to try and sort of hold out for that last chance. Something I've been trying to do a little bit more of is trying to sort of manage games a lot better. Uh, especially at that competitive level. I mean, you know, in weekend league and that kind of stuff, it's I don't really care. It's just weekend league. But when you get to that competitive level, um, you know, I've been trying to manage games a little bit better. I think I actually gave the ball away. I might have got a little bit lucky here to actually get myself um, get myself a chance. You know, I think Varane fouled and Buffet is pretty pretty weak there. I don't really know if I should have got that foul, but uh, I was able to get myself a last minute chance and. Um, I have been working on my last sort of those last chances, trying to perfect that that um, you know that kind of that skill move to try and surprise my opponent, especially in sort of the last minute. I mean, if you try and guess the right, if you use the right skill move, they, they potentially they could be a little bit nervous, trying to sort of hang on there for the last chance. I know myself, I don't defend those last chances very well. If you saw on the broadcast against Mark, that's how I actually got knocked out by conceding a 90th minute goal in the second leg. So I know myself, I'm very nervous defending that last chance. So something I've been trying to um, get better at is really try to make the most of that last chance if I do get that opportunity in in any any sort of um, yeah competitive game like this one here. So going into the second leg, I, uh, I did hold a 3-0 lead and 
Uh, there wasn't too much really to, to tell about this second leg. I was just trying to sort of manage the game. I mean, you could probably say I was playing, you know, like a bit of a, a bit of a rat, I guess. Just trying to sort of see out the game, not try and, you know, not sort of let my opponent back into the game as I have done multiple times in competitive games of FIFA. Um, you will probably have heard that, you know, I choked many leads in the last qualifiers. Uh, in qualifier number two, multiple times I was I was up and, you know, I had a one goal or a two goal lead and, and a lot of the time I just let those leads slip away and ended up basically just um, being my own worst enemy. So we proceeded to the next round and we ended up versing Marco, who is obviously, you know, one of the best players in our region and has been for many years now. Um, you probably would know of him if you are um, sort of aware of the FIFA scene as a whole. Now, I don't think I've versed him at a competitive level before. Um, I think I've literally only played him once, and it was only a few weekend leagues ago as well. So, you know, that was sort of a game that, that really didn't mean anything. And so, obviously, I didn't really know, I guess, what to expect too much from Marco. And I actually think I did get a bit lucky here to start off, as we have a, have another look here. Um, I mean, he makes a clear tackle there with, with his Varane. And uh, we'll watch it one more time as, um, I mean, it does kind of highlight how how annoying this game can be sometimes where he sort of makes that tackle with his last defender and it just rebounds straight to my player. And, you know, fortunately I managed to get myself to a 1-0 lead. Um, probably, you know, not, not quite deserved, um, I would say, considering, uh, you know, the fortune I had just there in that, in that chance. And... I think he might have got a little bit of fortune himself. Um, you know, I sort of got myself into the way of that first shot, and then he sort of won the ball back, and you know, maybe that's that's deserved. Um, you know, since I did get a lucky goal to take the lead myself, uh, maybe I should have been a little bit quicker there to tackle that ball again with Varane. Uh, but the ball was sort of just bouncing around the box uh, off that rebounded shot. I mean, maybe he should have scored off that first shot where I did manage to get my defender into the way. Um, but as we can see there. You know, I definitely wasn't the, um, the the more dominant player in that first half. Possibly some nerves, um, you know, finding them their way sort of you know into my into my game. Um, you know, with the with the level that you know that that I had to play at in this game and, and what's at stake, trying to uh, you know get that eighth spot and get myself a playoff spot. You know, I, I think I probably was feeling a little bit nervous. Um, you know, at, at this kind of, um, you know, at the moment, you know, at this kind of level, because it, it's not, it's not like a weekend league game, you know, it's, um, there's a lot at stake, very different to, you know, the, the feelings that you'd have in a weekend league game, and, and look, in the second half of the first leg, I won't lie, there wasn't too much to tell, I uh, just sort of pretty much trying to cancel each other out, I think we might have had maybe one shot each in that, uh, in that second half, but I did have a chance right at the end to take the lead, uh, cut inside again with St. Max, played a pass to Pele, played a pass back to Pele, and the shot got blocked. So, you know, maybe I potentially could have maybe looked for another pass. We'll have another look here and see if I had any other options. Um, it doesn't look like I did. Maybe a ball roll. Uh, I probably could have been a little bit more composed, as you can see there. Marco is clearly um, getting his player into the way of that shot. You know, he's done a tremendous job there. You know, being the last minute as well, um, trying to do all he can to um, to see off that game and not concede right there at the end. So credit to him there. He managed to um, to hold off that last that last chance, and I don't think I was composed enough as well with the chance that I did have um, to try and get in front in the first leg. And as you can see, that looks like Marco clearly did dominate. In the stats department, uh, you know, he had triple the amount of shots as I did. And, um, you know, so he probably should have been in the lead in that first game. You know, if you do count those stats there. So maybe I was a little bit lucky to go into that second leg, um, you know, sort of in a, in a situation where I, um, I could potentially still, you know, be in this game. And as we will see in the second leg, it was Marco on this occasion who took his chance to take the uh, take the early lead, I suppose, in this second leg. Uh, you know, sort of with some good build-up play, some, you know, some very sort of um, composed build-up play there. And then uh, I don't really know what my Varane was doing. I think I was holding uh, L2 and 
Uh, he managed to sort of bring him down by, I think it was pulling his shirt or something. And then Marker was able to convert the penalty and look with what was at stake. Uh, I think I sort of let this particular goal get in my head. And on the very next kickoff, I did something that I don't usually do, which is give away the ball straight away. And, um, you know, from that, I sort of saw what happens on a competitive level if you don't stay level-headed when you can see a goal and you go down in a game. Uh, you know, this is what can happen if you aren't sort of focused and you aren't at your best for every single second of, um, of the two legs. You know, we do play two legs at this level, and that's pretty much what can happen. You can go from basically being even in a game, one all. You know, even if you don't deserve to be at one all. You know, you can still try and sort of find your way, uh, try and stay in the game for as long as possible. And, you know, maybe if you're not the better player on the day, you can, you know, you can try and you know, do your best. Maybe if you can limit their opportunities, then, then you might have a chance somewhere at the back end to try and um, you know, to try and win the game. But if you don't stay level-headed, if you don't stay composed and, and you let sort of um, you know, any sort of negativity get into your head throughout the game, as I did with that penalty, as we saw, I gave the ball back straight away. Marco was able to then extend his lead in a matter of two minutes, and the whole leg, the whole game, basically just fell on its head in in the space of two minutes. And as we can see here, I'm sort of trying to find my way back in the game. We're at the 70th minute here. Just got a little bit impatient, played a very silly pass, trying to find my striker, and then Marco takes advantage of that. Simple Borol beats the keeper, and he's now 4-1 up, and... I don't think there's going to be too much chance for me to sort of find my way back from here. Uh, look, you know, unfortunately, if you give a player of Marco's caliber chances, as I have, from my own mistakes by just simply giving the ball away, being impatient, as I, you know, as I sort of was at the kickoff after conceding, and you know, it was only two one at the time. I really could have um, just sort of, if I stayed a little bit more focused. And just tried to, you know, see a little bit out, you know, of the game, maybe another 10 minutes and just tried to see how I went. Maybe I could have just, um, you know, kept my focus a little bit better. And maybe I could have found my way back into the game at that point. But then I gave him a 3-1 lead and, you know, I'm trying to sort of push for a goal here and being a little bit impatient. And now Marco goes and extends the lead to 4-1. I would find one goal back towards the end of the game to give myself some slight hope. Um, as we can see here, was a little bit more patient, you know, funnily enough, even though I had 10 minutes left here as opposed to 20 minutes or a whole half left earlier when I did make those mistakes leading to Marco's goals. But as we can see here, I was a little bit more patient, took a bit more time, looked for some sort of more key passes and was able to find one in the box there for St. Maximum playing as the cam with Neymar coming off the field. We've now had to pretty much go, you know, all out and, and just try to do everything we can. We've only eight minutes left to try and get two goals back. Um, you know, can we find two goals? I'm not too sure. You know, a player of Marco's caliber, you know, with his sort of ability to, to see out games and manage games, especially at this level, it was always going to be difficult. As we sort of, as we watch here and, and we see sort of what happens here, you know, I am trying to press and just pretty much do everything to try and win the ball back and, and maybe just give myself a chance to score, you know, one more goal. If I would have made it 4-3, then who knows, there might have been a chance for another goal. And, and as we've sort of been doing that towards the end of the game here, uh, Marco is able to punish me by simply playing that ball through. And that pretty much ends the game there at 5-2, and that's how it ended. So I would say, you know, Marco definitely the deserved winner. Uh, he did dominate that first leg as well. Probably unlucky to to only be one all up at the end of that first leg. And um, you know, I think the better player ended up winning this particular tie in the end. And with this particular system that we have at the moment, if you are in the winner's bracket and you do end up losing a game, not to worry, you do get another chance. So I was able to get myself another chance in the loser's bracket. So I believe, I, I think I went down to the fourth round of the loser's bracket, which is one round earlier than I got knocked out um, in the qualifier two. So obviously I went down to the loser's bracket when I made the broadcast in qualifier one. I lost to Marcus Gomez then on penalty shootouts. Now I'm versing uh, his brother Dylan Gomez, who actually knocked me out in round five of the... No, sorry, it wasn't round five of the loser's bracket. 
Um, it was he beat me in the in the winners bracket. It was round three, I believe. So he was um, yeah. So he knocked me down to the losers bracket. I ended up versing him again here in round four of the losers bracket. Now I had an early chance of Saint Max, and I don't know what happened here, but somehow somehow Saint Max missed that chance. I was able to dribble around and find my way into that box, and somehow Saint Maximum just didn't end up finishing that and. Um, look, I tried to stay composed because I know that in the last game I kind of let that penalty Marco scored get in my head a little bit and you know he was able to double his lead soon after and then this one here kind of killed me. So I you know I managed to find Pele inside the box. I did everything I could, I thought, and I thought I was going to be 1-0 up. And as you can see there, I've actually signaled a pause. So I've actually got my coach in my A here at this point and I've told my coach, I said, I need to have a pause and I need to cool off because the last time something like this happened um, in a qualify, it was when I actually got knocked out. So I versed, uh, I versed someone in the in round five, I believe, of the losers bracket in qualify two. And it was like the 70th minute, I think. And it was free all at the time. And it was actually St. Maximum who missed a really easy chance. And I didn't pause the game. He had a kickoff and he went down the field and scored. And he ended up winning 4 free. So I, I did learn my lesson. I did make the pause. To try and cool off, but as we can see here, you know, I just don't, I don't actually, I'm not able to find a way to try and get that pause, and, and as a result of that, Dylan's able to try and, I guess, take advantage of that and, and find his way down the field. As you can see, I'm clearly not sort of defending at my best, I'm, I'm not really sort of, um, I am trying to cover every pass, but I'm just not really sort of um, getting there quick enough, I'm, I'm trying to do everything I can, I'm sort of getting a bit jumbled up here, and uh, I'm looking a bit lost at the moment. You can clearly see I just need to try and clear my head a little bit. And then Dylan's able to score. I mean, look, it was a great goal from Dylan. Let's have another look at it because it was a, a really, really nice finish there with the reverse Elastico. was able to turn around and, um, and, and you know, finish that goal. So that was quite a good goal. Quite a good finish there from Dylan. But we can clearly see there that I definitely was affected by that second post that I hit. You know, I expected to be 1-0 up when Saint missed that chance. Definitely expected to be at least 1-0 up when Pele missed two chances. Um, you know, two rebounds there to, to try and... So, actually, the rebound off the post and then hit the keeper to try and get myself, you know, 1-0 up. And it definitely affected me there. And something that I really, really need to um, get better at, the mental side of FIFA, you can see that it really is affecting me. Um, trying to, you know, sort of fight off these... These things going on in, in my head when I am playing a game of FIFA and things aren't going my way. And, you know, just some incredible goal by Dylan. Let's have another look at it. But I don't think I'm defending very well here as well. I'm just sort of, I'm running all over the place, not even sort of making a tackle or anything like that. Um, I do want to have another look at it because it is such a great goal. So we've got to give some credit to Dylan. I mean, double, triple ball roll into a step over and then finish far post. I mean, that is... Probably one of the best goals I've I've conceded, I would say, in, in a competitive FIFA um, level. And then we'll have another look at it once more, just because it is such a highlight. I mean, that is that's quite incredible. I, I probably I think I actually just said to my coach at the time, I was like, yeah, well, there's not much I could do about that. That was just something from um, yeah, something from the the top the top drawer of Dylan's trick bag, I think. Uh, very, very, very good, um, very good goal there from Dylan. And then as we can see here, 2 nil down. I'm pretty sure I've just lost the pot at this stage. And, um, you know, maybe a little bit fortunate here as well. I think I did try to block off that pass or make the tackle. And Bape just sort of found his way through. That team of the year card is, you know, very, very strong. So he is going to be able to fight off someone like Varane for, you know, most of the time. So as he does here, he... He's able to do that, and now Dylan's got pretty much an unassailable lead. It's 3-0. Um, you know, when it could have been 2-0 to me in that first leg, and I think I've just sort of let everything get to me, and um, I'm really not playing like myself at this point, especially in defense, and I've even just said to my coach at halftime, I've said, look, I'm just going to literally just do everything I can. I'm just going to try a different formation, See what happens if I lose 6-0. It doesn't matter. I'm still going to be knocked out. Um, but, you know, maybe I can try something different and, um, you know, hope to try and come back. And my coach just said, yes, let, look, let's just go with it. Do what you feel comfortable with. And, um, you know, let's see how it goes. Um, you know, so 
I did try to do something a little bit different and, and you know, maybe I thought that would that would help me get back into the game. Um, we will see now if it did help me get back into the game and give me any kind of chance of saving myself from basically exploding after, you know, seemingly taking the lead twice in that first leg and just basically letting it get to me and then, you know, simply just basically finding myself 3-0 down not long after in this in this second leg and you know, as we'll see here, um, I would end up getting a chance. So I, I did end up actually getting a penalty here. Um, and look, as we see here, it probably wasn't the um, you know the most clear cut of penalties. I'm not too sure. We'll have another look. Uh, I think he was just trying to maybe block the shot, and maybe he sort of just uh, he's he's Theo Hernandez got it a little bit wrong. And as was the story in this particular tie, this was not my. Well, it's not my game, I think, and um, you know when you miss that penalty as well, kind of just sums it up. But I would end up seeing myself um, have a, a glimmer of hope, you could say, here when I sort of had this chance with Saint Maximum with a double tap back inside, and he ended up finishing this one instead of hitting the post. And um, you know now he's decided to come to the party and give me some kind of opportunity to potentially chase this game late in the second leg and. And as we'll see here, we have a chance here with Pele. Um, I think I'm on press, uh, maybe press after possession loss. I think I don't really have too much of a choice here. Got to get myself, you know, three goals when I did turn that on, when it was 3-0. So I had to do something um, to give myself some kind of hope to, to find a way back in. I'm playing a little bit more patient here with a 4-3-1-2, trying to really find the best possible chance I can. And, I, and as you can see, I do just that. And I find Mbappe on that right-hand side. Uh, you know, just it is what it is with that four-three-one-two. You know, if you play those those passes, uh, something's going to open up eventually. If you are patient enough and you know exactly what you're doing, and then I think Dylan just got very unlucky here when he had a chance to basically end the game at three-two. Probably would have made it. You know, that would have made it four-two, and the game would have been over at that point. Um, I mean, look, when you have a look at this game, obviously I did get unlucky and probably should have been 2-0 up in that first leg um, before Dylan scored that goal. But, you know, this is how it is, guys, with competitive FIFA. If you do, you know, let things get to your head and you don't sort of keep your cool and, and your focus, games can turn so, so quickly. You just don't have that. You just can't afford to, to let things get into your head. And I do that quite a lot. Uh, it's something that I'm trying to get better at. Um, it's not easy. It's not as easy as it as it sounds. You can't just flick a switch because you just don't really have anything to practice um, being in that situation. It's not like I can just go into a friendly and say, yeah, mate, we're in a game of competitive FIFA here and I've just missed the post twice and now I've got to practice how I'm going to recover from that um, and not let it get to my head and, and see myself 3-0 down in... Um, over the next sort of 90 minutes of FIFA. So it's just not something you can practice for. It's something you have to try and get better uh, with over time. And it's just not that simple. It really isn't that simple. It's um, it's a very, very difficult thing. And as we can see here, I, I wasn't able to do, you know, too much with my, my last chance. And, and, you know, credit to Dylan. He was able to, to see out this game and, and hold on to the ball and find his way into the next stage of the Losers bracket and that would end up see see me eliminated from the tournament um, Unfortunately, I wouldn't end up getting that eighth spot to make the playoffs um, However, I do have to be quite proud of how I have went about my first competitive year of FIFA My first initial aim was to you know basically just get verification in FIFA 21 Which is something I, I didn't do in FIFA 20 obviously starting off as a gold 2 player, I had no idea what, what verification was. Um, you know, in my first competitive year of FIFA, I did that, which was my pretty much my first and main goal. I did that, I was able to get into a broadcast event, which is something I never would have thought I would have done. Um, made the fifth round of the, of the losers bracket in qualifier 2, and then the fourth round. So, I mean, look, I can't be too disappointed at how I have performed in the FIFA 21 season. I believe I will end up 12th ranked in Oceania for FIFA 21. Something I could have only dreamed of basically 12 months ago. So I do have to be quite proud of where I have come from. 
Um, and basically now it's time to get back to work and try and improve on that. So as we will see here guys, I am currently in 10th spot, but um, you know, after some of the results on Saturday, I believe I'll end up being in 12th spot. So, uh, you know, another couple other guys below me ended up making the broadcast. So, um, Mo and Mike J, who are, you know, very good players in their own rights and, uh, completely deserved of their broadcast finish in the qualifiers just gone by. So, I believe they will end up jumping ahead of me and I will end up in 12th spot for the Oceania region of FIFA 21. And that is the video today, guys. I hope you did enjoy the highlights video. If it's something that you did enjoy, let me know in the comments and I'll be sure to do some more highlights, maybe some foot champions highlights or something like that in the foreseeable future. But it's goodbye from me, guys, and thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.